Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com Welcome to Track Talk, your connection coast to coast and beyond in all the latest news, development, stake race analysis, and interviews inside the world of thoroughbred horse racing. From California to New York, Florida, and Kentucky, we have you covered. It's post time, live from San Diego, it's Track Talk. And we are live from America's finest city on a Sunday morning. Just a beautiful day uh, throughout the neighborhood. And no matter where you are worldwide, uh, anywhere throughout the universe, as we bring you Track Talk on this Sunday morning live from the WS Radio Network. And it is a lot of exciting uh, information coming down the pike in relation to the Breeders' Cup in five days, you know, uh, my palms get sweaty. It's so exciting to see all the connections and all the equines get together at one venue and vie for a world championship. The, the Breeders' Cup has become uh, so huge. Uh, the late John Gaines in 1984 had a vision of bringing all the champions together in one day. Now it's been expanded to two days. It's been all around the country. It's been internationally uh, run at Woodbine as well. And since 1984, it is racing's best day for a number of reasons. Uh, the pools are huge. Uh, if you bet, uh, you might get a horse 20 to 1, and on, on an average day, it might be 4 or 5 to 1. Uh, the returns of the values of the horses in the pools, the payouts, uh, $329,000 superfectas are, you know, are not uncommon at the Breeders' Cup. And so uh, we're five days away, and being here in Del Mar, uh, we experienced the like of a, of a Breeders' Cup 2017, which I think most would walk away and, and, and respond by saying it was one of the most beautiful days in all their racing lives because everything was perfect. And so we look forward to be at Santa Anita uh, this Friday and Saturday, and we are joined uh, with the president and the CEO of the Breeders' Cup, Craig Fravel. Craig, thanks for joining us on a Sunday. How are you? Morning, Felix. I'm doing really well. Thank you. All righty. So I would assume you're in California, Los Angeles, maybe Del Mar, wherever you are. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna feel you're feeling the pulse about what's going to explode on Friday, right? I sure am. Uh, the, I'm actually sitting here at the with a view of the uh, uh, San Gabriel Mountains, and uh, it's a beautiful day at Santa Anita. You know, we've been friends a long time, and I've followed your career. You know, we go back to the mid-'90s when you were responsible for the entire renovation of the Del Mar racetrack. And uh, we remember little Del Mar, and now we go back and we see the three phases of the new Del Mar. And it's been an exciting time for the growth of Del Mar. You've been, you've been there, and since you've been at the Breeders' Cup since 2011, Craig Fravel, um, I think that you have brought a lot of energy and a lot of growth to the Breeders' Cup as you did Delmar. Would you see any comparisons in both, Craig? You know, I guess I would. Um, it, first of all, it was, you know, a, a really super time when I was at Delmar. I started there in 1990 and um, left to take the Breeders' Cup job in 2011. But if there's anything, you know, you carried from one to the other was the emphasis on the live racing experience, you know, having people at the track, the energy of the event and, uh, you know, really delivering to the extent possible on customer service. And, you know, just, I always felt like if people left at the end of the day, wanting a little bit more that we were making progress. So we tried to do that, uh, Del Mar and, you know, the team there has carried on anything that certainly I started there, had a part in starting. And, um, you know, the other thing that carries forward is just the teamwork. I mean, um, you know, a lot of guys at the top tend to get either too much credit or too much blame, but, um, we got a lot of great people, uh, both at the Breeders' Cup and Del Mar, and it's just a privilege to work with them. Well, you're the right man for it. Let me, um, let me speed forward, um, Friday and Saturday, Santa Anita, the great race place. When you look at the international connections that, 
are looking forward to flying their horses, putting them in quarantine and get ready to race at the great race place, Santa Anita. You've seen the growth of the Breeders' Cup. How much has it grown internationally since you've been the head of the Breeders' Cup? Well, you know, I think my first year um, at the Breeders' Cup, we had about 25 or so international starters. Um, you know, that was at Churchill Downs. Last year at Churchill, I think we had 38 or 39 international starters. Uh, and we had 46 pre-enter this year. So, um, you know, and when you spend a lot of time in Europe, like I do, you get a lot of feedback on, you know, what people are interested in. And basically, they, you know, what, they, what they'll tell you is we want to come. We just want to make sure we have a horse that's good enough. We don't want to get embarrassed if we get over there and don't put on a good show. So I think the second thing that always stands out for me is that um, people who ship that far, they come to the Breeders' Cup, and even when they don't do well, they tell us afterwards what a great time they had. So you know, there's nothing like some American hospitality to, to welcome guests from elsewhere. You know, since you've been the head of the Breeders' Cup, uh, you allocated two uh, host sites, uh, Keeneland, and a lot of people said, wow, Keelan's never going to be able to accommodate a Breeders' Cup. And then you came right back with Del Mar. And people said, well, Del Mar, well, it's much more uh, practical, so to speak, because they got a lot of hotel rooms, you know, in California, San Diego. And both of them went one and two. I mean, stellar. Uh, is that important for you? I mean, was that a part of your stamping your name on bringing the experience to the lesser known tracks or the smaller tracks? I know both of them were capped off at attendance, 42,000, whatever the case might be at Keeneland and Del Mar. But was that always in your, your mindset to go to a smaller venue to give those fans in Kentucky or the ones in California, like here at Del Mar, uh, a taste of the Breeders' Cup experience? Well, you know, I think it's uh, it, it's an awesome thing to bring, you know, the best horses in the world to new venues. And uh, I, well, I was a little shocked when I got back to Kentucky and started working there that uh, the sort of both national and international awareness of how great Del Mar is was on the low side. So uh, they certainly knew Keeneland, but they only knew it as a, you know, sales company and as a small you know, two, three week meet, uh, in the spring and, and fall. Um, so, you know, it really was a great opportunity, a great challenge. I mean, I know our staff here at the Breeders' Cup likes trying new things. So it was, uh, I'm not gonna tell you it was fun the whole time, but, uh, it was fun to see how it panned out. And, um, you know, how, how popular those venues were. And, you know, what we did make a very clear strategic decision that we didn't care about posting a huge number in terms of attendance that it was no longer about saying we had 70 or 80,000 people. It was about saying the people who came, uh, had an amazing time. Uh, the betting was terrific. You know, our on track handle at Del Mar, even though it's not our biggest facility is the largest we've ever had. So, um, that proved a lot about, uh, you know, what, what makes for good racing. Without a doubt. And I'm here to tell you that, uh, the Del Mar experience, I tip my hat to your associate, the vice president, senior vice president of marketing over there, uh, Craig Dato and that entire team, Josh, Joe Harper, and all the people that work underneath uh, that team structure, but more so uh, Craig Dato. And, uh, Craig, and I, Craig Dato was joking with me one day, said, are you coming to the Breeders' Cup? And I said, no, nah, I don't think so. And he says, why not? And I said, because I don't want to be – in lines, you know, waiting to bet, you know, and people, you know, just going up there betting their $2 to show, and it's going to be, you know, shoulder to shoulder. It's going to be crowded, as we have come to know, for opening days at Del Mar. And he said, it's not going to be like that. He said, just give me a chance and be there and tell me what you what you think after. And exactly what you said, Craig Frable, is exactly what transpired. It was so comfortable there. It was organized. And I think if you did an exit poll, 99.5% uh, would have said their experience was at the top of the world. Uh, the, the other 0.5 would have been that there might have been some additional lighting put into that dirt parking lot uh, way back across Jimmy Durante because at, at that time uh, being run in November or late October, whatever the case was, uh, you know, got dark earlier and you, you couldn't see. But that Breeders' Cup at Del Mar, uh, probably will remain 
not probably, will remain my top five memory of being a part of this industry. Okay, so now we're at the Breeders' Cup here, and let's let's trans let's let's transfer over. Uh, you are leaving the Breeders' Cup after the Breeders' Cup concludes, and you are going to be the head of racing at the Stronic Group. Um, was it a decision that you know? that tried on you? Was it a decision that uh, you had to think about for a while? Or tell us about the decision of leaving the Breeders' Cup, which is the greatest brand in all of racing, going over to the Strani Group, which undoubtedly uh, has some issues and problems that are on the horizon. Well, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, after you've worked at Del Mar and after you've worked at the Breeders' Cup, you know, you you look for maybe another opportunity where you can make a difference in, in the business. And, you know, I've, I've tried everywhere I've been to uh, hopefully leave each place a little better than it was when I started there. And um, so, I, you know, I'd view this next role uh, and probably be one of my last in racing, but uh, as a great opportunity to make a contribution and particularly back here in California, you know, my job's going to entail, the, all the various Strana Group properties and training centers, racetracks. But um, I think the first priority is going to be um, helping to put California back where it belongs as uh, one of the top, um, you know, circuits in all of racing. And uh, it's been a rough year, but um, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, that we're, you know, back at the top. And uh, it also, you know, let's not kid ourselves, my family's been living in Del Mar for the last three years and I've been commuting back and forth. So, uh, it'll be nice to be at least living in the same state. I understand that. And, uh, uh that, that is, you know, well-deserved, uh, you know, I, I know your wife, Kathy, I know your, your, your child, Ireland, I known Kathy before I, I met Craig Frey, will tell you the truth. And, uh, I'm happy to see that, uh, you are a racing couple, uh, that brings a lot of happiness to people. Uh, your wife is the, you know, the salt of the earth without any question. I want to ask you in, you know, I, I don't want to. I know you're getting ready for this great event. By the way, I want to thank your team at the Breeders' Cup. I want to thank uh, Justin and Peter uh, during the whole course of the year and you, Craig Frabel, for uh, being a big part of our radio show and always helping, always helping. Uh, you were a man of your word, and uh, you said that, you know, that you would support and you, you have supported. But I want to ask you, Craig, as a friend, how difficult was it to keep the Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita? It was, you talk about a horrible year for you. Well, this radio program has had a horrible year as well because we had to stay positive since uh, Christmas Day or the day after Christmas, Santa Anita, all through the calendar with all uh, the negative uh, pu public abuse that we have taken in regard to the industry uh, and what has happened at Santa Anita. What... What prompted you to keep the Breeders' Cup in California? I, I have to think that there was enormous pressures and there was a lot of people tugging on a, a lot of different directions and a lot of sleeves of yours. What prompted you to keep it here at Santa Anita? Well, first of all, it wasn't just me. Like I said earlier, you know, all this is about teamwork and, and doing things together. Uh, I think that, you know, the Breeders' Cup board um, – had the opportunity to meet with Belinda Stronach directly and hear from her about not only her plans uh, and the reforms that they've instituted here in Del Mar um, subsequently, and actually some of them before that. But uh, And uh, the fact of the matter is California is enormously important to not just the Breeders' Cup, but to the you know American uh, and international breeding industries. Uh, it's a huge wagering market for the entire country. And, um, you know, we... we we're highly supportive of everything that they've done. So, you know, you got to give people credit where credit is due. And it wasn't like people were just saying, well, like ignore the issues and just, you know, come over and join us anyway. It was, look, we're doing something about it. Uh, we've done something about it and um, we've turned the corner and uh, the breeders kept going somewhere else with send the entirely wrong message. You know, when people, are trying to do the right things, you need to stick with them. So that's what the entire Breeders' Cup board was unanimous in that decision. And, uh, you know, we're certainly glad to be here. You talk about Belinda Stronic, and, you know, there's a lot of questions, uh, you know, throughout the situation that developed at Santa Anita. 
Uh, a lot of people had a lot of different opinions in regard to what direction Santanita was going. And one of the questions that sort of was always prompted was the fact that does Belinda Stronic really want to see racing succeed at Santanita or do they still want to be a part or sell that property off for, you know, for millions and millions of dollars and build condominiums and what have you. But I think hiring Craig Fravel, uh, you know, you had to be somewhat confident that that wasn't her attention. Well, look, that was one of the first questions that we asked, not about my career, but about Breeders' Cup in general. Is like, what are your intentions for, you know, this place? And uh, I think, uh, you know, like I said, you got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, somebody who was less committed in the midst of, you know, some of the um, – bad publicity that was going on and finger pointing and other things would have said, I don't need this. So I'm going to do exactly what you were saying. And, uh, that's never been the case. You know, the people say you want to sell it. And the answer was no. And, um, so, uh, and what she said to me, and I'll tell you quite honestly, is if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. So, um, I think, uh, the commitments there and that's been, you know, easily demonstrated. Look, the gamblers are important in this game, and you understand those people. I think you come from a fabric, you know, being cut from Del Mar. Uh, they understand uh, the gambling aspect of it. Uh, Santa Anita, you know, we're on an island here, uh, but the racing is still, you know, top shelf. It really is the great race place. You made the commitment. We've got to get a find a way in which we've got to find a way in which the trainers who have left California and put strings of horses into Kentucky or New York or wherever that we get them back here and we build it and we build it with relationships. And I think that Santa Anita has gone off track a, a, a little bit. First of all, there's a lot of complaints of in regards to uh, the extended post times. Uh, if a post goes off at 3 o'clock, 3.05, it should go off. They're, they're dragging down at Gulfstream. That is not good for the game. we got to make the changes to get. I think the glass is half full rather than half empty at Santa Anita. I think with a person of your integrity and your experience of get in there and getting people to work with you. I mean, we can build Santa Anita back up. And, yes, you're absolutely 100% correct. We need Santa Anita in California, but racing needs Santa Anita throughout the country because it is one of the top uh, venues of all racing facilities. So what I'm saying is that you have to feel pretty good. What would your first, what would your first act when you take the job over, uh, when you begin, what would be your first change that you would make at Santa Anita, or have you thought about that? Well, you know, I, uh, to be honest with you, I've been focused on the Breeders' Cup, so um, and, and I'm still working for the Breeders' Cup, so trying to dive into you know everything that's happened here over the last, you know, I haven't really been involved in California racing uh, from a uh, day-to-day standpoint since 2011, so I, I wouldn't presume to, you know, I'm, I'm a very patient person. I like to learn and understand, and I, I don't go off in a bunch of different directions if I can avoid it, so uh, you know, I'm very patient about figuring out what the problems are, but, what, well, you know, one thing you brought up earlier, uh, the, the gamblers, the horsemen, this is a very organic business, and we're all in it together, and uh, hopefully it's something that you know, I, I bring to the table is that I've got great relationships with uh, many of those constituencies and have enormous respect for them, Not you know, not just trainers, but owners and breeders now that have gotten connections with them in Kentucky and uh, and, and the gambling public. So we, we've got a lot of customers here at Santa Anita. we got to keep them happy, um, whether they're horsemen or, or players. And um, you know, I look forward to that emphasis. You know, we're going to try to, you know, whatever damage may have been done, we're going to try to restore relationships. And uh, one thing that people, I think, know about me is if I say I'm going to do something, I, I do my best to do it. Um, we're not going to have any, any doubts about um, where we stand on something. 
you know, I, I, I applaud you and I respect you for staying to the task. You're still uh, the president and CEO of, of the Breeders' Cup. Name me three takes, take away from the Breeders' Cup that you initiated. I think a year ago you initiated a deal with FanDuel. Uh, you got them, you know, on the fantasy wagering to get involved. And I think that that went underneath the radar where that, you know, you had different relationships on trying to improve the brand. The brand is international. You're dealing with people from Ireland, France, England, all over the world that want to come to your party. Uh, as, as a president and CEO of the Breeders' Cup, which I applaud you for doing a great job, what have what would be your three takeaways that when you sit back and say, look, you know, I'm very proud that I created, I initiated, I produced, I developed, and I got this done of the Breeders' Cup? Well, you know, some of it, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of others when we when get into these businesses. And, you know, the Breeders' Cup goes back to 1982, really, when John Gaines and, uh, uh, and his uh, compatriots in Kentucky and internationally came up with the idea. And um, so, you know, we've tried in my tenure here to, to build on that success. Uh, I think, you know, uh, unequivocally, we've been steadfast in making sure that this is viewed as an international championship. It's conducted in America, but we want to be welcoming to people from all over the world. I think that's been uh, emphasized from you know, day one. I don't know that I have a, a, a proper appreciation of that when I started there, but it didn't take long to figure it out. And it just adds so much more to the event. So, you know, this is now a global business. I know. People don't like to talk about globalism, but, uh, you know, we got to be welcoming to, to everyone and that not just people from California, but from Kentucky, New York, elsewhere. So that's certainly one takeaway is just sort of the inclusiveness of the event. Uh, I think another thing was, um, you know, when I got to the Breeders' Cup, our television relationships were fading and we were able to enter into a long-term partnership with NBC Sports and uh, you know, John Miller, Gary Quinn, Mark Lazarus, uh, folks at NBC have been incredible partners and, you know, stuck with us and, and tried to help us grow this brand and expand its presence. And I think that's been a, a really, you know, terrific relationship. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the last part would just be the, like you mentioned earlier, um, you know, we, the emphasis in prior years, we, we really only had two venues we could go to when I started. That was Churchill Downs and Santa Anita. And, uh, you know, what the focus was on getting crowds or at least reporting crowds of 60, 70,000. And um, we were more interested at the end of the day in uh, exposing the world and, you know, promoting other brands within racing and the positive impact the Breeders' Cup could have on a Del Mar or a Keeneland and, uh, you know, there were a lot of people said those couldn't be done. I think you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, certainly took a fair amount of pleasure in, in those being so successful. Well, to be honest with you, I haven't heard one person that attended the Breeders' Cup at Del Mar uh, say uh, anything disparaging. It's it just, uh, it was just has been all all glorious and top shelf, and, and, and you felt that way there. You know, I want to ask you a couple more questions, and I appreciate you, you giving us your time on this Sunday, uh, five days before the Breeders' Cup. You know, would you say that the, uh, the state of, of racing in England and Ireland is, um, is pretty healthy right now, isn't it? Well, you know, uh, one thing you find out about racing when you travel around the world is that um, – there's a fair amount of complaining that goes on, uh, you know, because it's a highly competitive business and, you know, people want to win and sometimes they don't. So um, that, that can lead to um, some down moments and, and challenges. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I think racing is special everywhere, but what's not special is that there's always room for improvement somewhere. So I don't think we have anything to apologize for in this country in terms of uh, you know, the quality of horsemanship or the, um, you know, the horses we produce, the level of competition, you know, some of the great uh, racing events in the world are held here in the U.S. And I, I put the Breeders' Cup right up there with all of them. So uh, I, I think we have nothing, like I said, we have nothing to apologize for. 
You have definitely made your mark. The Breeders' Cup, you know, now expanded to two days. Where has it gone from when you started as far as purse structure uh, to where it is right now? I mean, the the bar has to be raised considerably, no? Uh, well, we've raised purses, I think, uh, in total, somewhere around $5 million. I'd have to go back and look at the actual numbers. but um, uh, And the... You know, we added the juvenile turf sprint, which, you know, we debated long and hard over whether that was a race that we thought could, uh, you know, have some championship quality. We we dropped a race or two along the way. The old um, juvenile dirt sprint, we decided, was taking horses away from the juvenile. And, and then, the, you know, the marathon, uh, which uh, was kind of a fun race to have as part of the card, but you know, we decided that was never really going to get to the level of a grade one uh, event just because dirt horses going a mile and a half in this country doesn't seem to be in the cards over the long haul. So, you know, we've made some changes in the racing uh, product, I think, all for the better. Now we're at 14, and we've got uh, the juvenile, um, you know, Future Stars Friday, which, you know, a lot of hand wringing over that, whether that was a good idea or a bad one. And uh, our handle on Friday last year was as good as, you know, the year before at Del Mar. So, um, you know, those are, are fun improvements. And I think, you know, who, whoever takes the reins after me along with the board is going to, you know, make positive changes. And, uh, you know, you can't stand still in this world. So, so I know people are constantly looking at ways they can improve things. Yeah, and, you know, you can only do what your team brings to you and move forward as a team. Uh, let me put it into uh, the cement prospectus of um, of what the Breeders' Cup handled last year, a two-day event as Craig Frabel joining us on Track Talk, the president and CEO. They wagered $163 million over those two days from Churchill Downs. Now, for a dying sport, I, I, I think that uh, anybody would love to have that two-day handle, $163 million. And I, I'm sure that, and I, I know this, and I, and I kind of feel this, is that, you know, with all the, uh, the, the protesting that's going on at Santa Anita with PETA and everything, I think Californians, and we've been on this for a couple months, we want to get our coalition of people from San Diego to be on track at the Breeders' Cup to support the industry, but support California racing at its finest. If you're listening to this radio program, which we've been doing it for almost 25 years, believe it or not, and if you listen to this program and uh, you get information from our our, our team, Larry Zapp, uh, Tommy D, Toby Terrell, uh, you can do us a favor by going on track Friday and Saturday at Santa Anita and being a part of the Breeders' Cup. being It's like voting. You know, you, we got to vote. We've got to show these people because there has been some resistance against us in California racing, and we're much better than that, and I think we're heading in the wrong direction. And I will speak out of school. I think the relationship of Craig Fravel going to the Strani Group is only going to strengthen California racing because now we have an ally here from Del Mar Craig knows the fabric of Del Mar. We can work together. We can build California racing. Craig, I know you're going to be looking forward to a busy five days. It's going to be a lot of shaking hands, a lot of smiles. I think your team has put you in a great position for a great walk-up day, Friday and Saturday. Let's have a safe run over the ovals on the main track as well as the turf course. And I want to thank you very much for your service to the Breeders' Cup, your friendship, and I wish you the very best in your new position. But you've got the Breeders' Cup ahead of you, and, and that's, a, that's a, a big birthday present yet to be open. So have a great two days, and we'll talk with you real soon, Craig. Thank you, Felix. Like you said, you know, I just drove up from San Diego this morning. Anybody from down there knows it doesn't take too long to get here to San Diego. It'll be worth the trip. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you have a great week ahead. I'll see you, I'll see you later on. See you there. Thank and you, Felix. You got it. Craig Fravel, uh, president and CEO of the Breeders' Cup, and we appreciate we appreciate that as uh, uh, we move forward. Yeah, we could take a break here whenever uh, we get it, get it lined up. Uh, you know, the Breeders' Cup has been the standard of championship racing and thoroughbred horse racing. And I want to support the Breeders' Cup and applaud them for 
giving us the best two days in all of racing. So here, let's tip our hats and cheers to the Breeders' Cup 2019, live at Santa Anita. Hi, this is Felix Taverna, and I'm here to share with you a great place to begin your day. And that is the Broken Yoke Cafe. 15 San Diego locations to serve you. Downtown, Mission Valley, Bonita, East Lake, San Diego State, Point Loma, Mara Mesa, Del Mar, La Costa, Escondido, Oceanside, San Marcos, and Rancho San Diego. Benedict's omelets, French toast, crepes, pancakes and waffles, sandwiches, wraps, burgers, soups, and salads. Start your day at the Broken Yoke Cafe. Chris Merch, Captain Email here, former owner of WS Radio, back in studios with 21 tips to increase sales. And they're real easy to get. Just whip out that smartphone, even that phone that still does texting, and text 21 tips to 22828. That's 21 tips to 22828. 21 tips, no space, to 22828, and you'll be getting two tips a day for the next two weeks. The most trusted information provider in horse racing is now the leading logic in sports handicapping. The Daily Racing Form has launched DRF Sports. Visit sports.drf.com to learn more and get the edge you need to win big. Access their exclusive database of trends and powerful angles for just $5 per week. And if you use promo code PENNY, you'll get your first week for just one cent. Visit sports.drf.com today. When you talk about San Diego legends, you got to talk about Big John at Tip Top Meats, a European delicatessen unlike anything in San Diego. You know it's located in Carlsbad, and traditionally it's been a fan favorite for many. Big John does it right with the holiday season just around the corner. It's your best bet. Big John, Tip Top Meats, and Top Shelf Fish. I mean, that's a daily double. You've been there, you know it's legendary. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. Have you tried DRF Formulator PPs at DRF.com? Take your handicapping to the next level with premium features not found in DRF Classic PPs, including one-click access to complete race charts, full-screen video replays with both standard and head-on views, add your notes for a card, horse, or trip, and access from any device. View time-form U.S. pace figures, get customized printing options, and so much more. Try DRF Formulator PPs today at DRF.com PPs.